Hello, everyone. This is Rob McDougall from Zank Financial here with your economic update. Today is Monday, November 11th, 2024. So we always go through the data points, economic data points that were released every week, and then we try to tie back those data points to what happens in the equity and the fixed income markets. But last week, the economic releases were largely ignored as the markets were intensely focused on the U.S. presidential election. So the U.S. presidential election was so impactful last week that the Federal Reserve cut rates 25 basis points on Wednesday and hardly anyone noticed. So let's take it. We'll go through anyways and just take a look at the economic data. It is important. Uh, but then discuss what happened last week post the election and the amazing returns uh, that we had in U.S. markets last week. So. Economic activity last week, we had a few data points. One was the ISM services number, which for the month of October, that came out on Tuesday. The expectation was it would come in at 53.8. Um, 50 is the demarcation line, so below that is contraction, above is expansion. Uh, that actually came in at 56, so that was a very strong upside positive data point, U.S. services. Initial jobless claims last week came in exactly as expected, 221,000. And the only other economic release last week of note, on Friday, Michigan University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index, for the month of November, that was expected to come in at 71, upside there as well, came in at 73. So as a result of, I think, both the election and a couple of data points that we had last week, the Atlanta Federal Reserve took up their expectations for fourth quarter GDP growth. Uh, they were at 2.3%. They nudged that up to 2.5% for the fourth quarter. Uh, the expectation for inflation uh, rose just slightly last week, two basis points. Now is at 2.35%. So that's the expected average inflation over the next 10 years. Still pretty modest, we would say. Uh, the Fed funds rate. So the Atlanta or the, the Federal Reserve, the FOMC, did make the decision to cut rates last week, 25 basis points. So now they've cut a total of 75 basis points during this rate cutting cycle. Uh, expectations for one more in December. However, expectations for that did decrease last week. The expectation had been about an 80 percent probability of another 25 basis point cut in December. That probability has dropped to about 66%. So last week, mentioned uh, the markets reacted very strongly to the U.S. presidential um, result. And part of that was relief. Uh, and as we mentioned on the podcast last week, uh, I was wrong. Did expect uh, the actual decision or the ultimate winner not to be declared um, the same day as the election, we had plenty of states, Michigan was one, Arizona, California, where they had foretold the fact that they would be late counting all the votes. Nonetheless, Donald J. Trump uh, voted in and acknowledged as the winner of the U.S. presidential uh, race, 47th. So the market responded very positively to it, relief factor for sure, but also an expectation of, or at least some hope, for additional economic growth, both from tax rate cuts that are expected and from decreased regulation. So last week, we'll look at the numbers, but uh, U.S. equities were up very strongly. Small caps led the way. Financials were near the top of the list. The U.S. dollar uh, up against almost any major currency. Bitcoin, um, a asset class that we'll be talking more about in the future, I think because it is getting too big to ignore Bitcoin up strongly. And just in general, cyclical sectors did much better than growth sectors last week. So in total, S&P 500 last week up 4.7%. It's fantastic, really led by small cap. It's Russell 2000 up 8.9% last week. Uh, and the international markets up as well, not nearly as strong as US. Developed markets, XUS up 30 basis points. Emerging markets up 1.2%, really uh, pushed forward by Chinese market, which has been very strong for the last three months. Uh, China was up 1.8% last week. 
So again, here in the U.S., fixed income markets with that Fed uh, rate cut last week, 25 basis points, another rally in the bond market. So the Bloomberg U.S. aggregate bond index up about 0.8% last week. So now for the year, that index is a positive 2.2%, kind of a modest uptick. We did have a strong um, rally last week in November, December. So the 12 month looks a lot better, but year to date, Bloomberg U.S. aggregate bond index up 2.2%. Just to recap on the S&P 500, after that 4.9% increase last week, um, that is up 27.2% on a year to date basis. So just a a surprisingly strong year for the S&P 500 after a very strong 2023. So let's take a look at some of the economic activity that we expect to be, we know will be released this week, mostly is on inflation. Starts off on Wednesday. Uh, the CPI number will come out. The CPI for the month of October, uh, just the headline rate is expected to be same as it was in September, a positive 0.2% month over month. And core inflation rate, that's uh, uh, inflation rate minus food and energy, that's also expected to be in line with what it was the prior month, September. It's expected to be up a positive 0.3% month over month. On Thursday, we'll get the producer price index, PPI, both the core and the headline. The headline is expected to accelerate. So the month of September, the headline PPI number was flat month over month. But for the month of October, it's expected to be up 20 basis points. Core CPI as well, that was up 0.2% in September, month over month. For the month of October, it's expected to be up 0.3%. Also on Thursday, we'll get the U.S. jobless claims. Remember, last week was 221,000. It's expected to tick up just slightly to 224,000. And lastly, on Friday, we get retail numbers, retail sales, and retail sales ex-auto. Uh, we're expected to see a little bit of a slowdown there, and that's probably good in terms of inflation uh, because the consumer was red hot in the third quarter, really leading the GDP growth that we reported a week or two ago. So retail sales are expected to be up in the month of October, 0.3% month over month. Month of September, that was positive 0.4%. Retail sales ex-auto, same, expected to be up 0.3% month over month. But in the month of September, that was up a full half a percent. So that's it for the economic recap and a preview of this week's economic activity. We thank you very much for watching, and we hope to see you next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.